I think what's important as well, and you, I think you hit on it from a collaborative, creative environment point of view, you also need to identify good ideas mm -hmm. that may not be appropriate within what you're working on. Mm -hmm. So you don't just throw it out and say, it's a bad idea. You say, that's an excellent idea. It's just not a good fit for what we're doing here, but we might be able to revisit that later. And that's a whole different conversation than, than uh, you know, just shutting people down and, and things like that. Because there are some amazing things that can spin out of not exactly the right fit for this, but it might transform something else. So today on Sea level I have Rob Halverson. He is the president and CEO of Portman Architects. Rob, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. So New York guy, I know a little bit about you, but I, I like to uh, learn people's journey. Like, how did how did you get into all this? What, give me your background. Great question. Um, you know, everybody's journey is a little bit of an uh, interesting path, but uh, I grew up in New York, um, upstate New York, went to uh, Syracuse University for undergraduates, so I've been a Bachelor of Architecture there, mm -hmm. uh, met some amazing folks. Um, ended up um, at SOM in New York after that, which at the time I didn't realize really what that was all about. Um, but it's a great, great place to learn, cut your teeth. Um, went to graduate school uh, at Yale after that. Um, was in Manhattan for 12 years. Um, met my wife, had our daughter. I don't want to say we panicked, but uh, we uh, we realized that that was a little bit of a a challenge kind of staying in New York at that time. So we came down to Atlanta and I've been at Portman for 14 years. Wow. That's awesome. You know, it's funny. A lot of people, my, my, uh, my mother worked at uh, NGIT oh, okay. and I could have went to college completely for free. And I, and I, obviously I, I went to film school instead. I was like, Ma, can you really picture me as an engineer? I don't know about that. <laughs> so there's a lot that goes into yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the greatest. I mean, the great thing about the Northeast is that the, the amount of talent up there is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, competition is up there, so anyone that can start their career, you know, they say you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. But I think there is something to that where um, you have to be humble. You really have to know your know your stuff to be able to uh, stay in that business. Yeah, um, and to be able to bring that experience elsewhere, no matter where you are, whether it's Asia or China, or it doesn't matter. Um, is really what, what, what it's all about. So, so talk a little bit about uh, Portman, like what, what, what's, what's your role there? What do you, what, you know, how, how does the company operate? What are some of the projects maybe you can talk about that you've worked on? Sure. So how does Portman operate? Um, historically, we're a 67 year old design firm, um, which evolved from Mr. Portman um, himself who started he was the first architect developer, so he wanted to design and build his own projects. I mean, so he wanted to do it all, which at the time was not ever done. I mean, it just, he was such an entrepreneur when it, when it came to that. Um, over the years, he's evolved multiple companies, and we have a, a sister company called Portman Holdings, which they do the development side now. We're completely separate, and we focus on the design, and we work with um, developers all over the world. Um, so we've now expanded the practice, um, which was through Jack, which is Mr. Fortman's son. Um, we were the fourth license in Shanghai, in China, back in the 70s. Wow. Um, so we have that long heritage of working internationally and domestically. Um, we do work, we design work uh, in California, Salt Lake City right now, um, Chicago, San Diego, Atlanta, of course. And um, so what's fun about that is Atlanta is our hometown. So there's this heritage of all of downtown is Mr. Portman has developed over his 60 years. Mm -hmm. um, and we are now with this kind of uh, rebirth, if you want to call it, because the, Mr. Portman had passed away and, and kind of gave our our legacy on to how do we carry the firm forward, um, moving forward, right? So at that point, it's you, we have new designers. We've got a great staff, great team to kind of lead the practice for the next 60s something years or however long it goes. 
And my job is to make sure that that infrastructure, that team, that that spirit kind of moves forward um, in the best way. So if I can find, and I am finding the best team and retooling and it's, it's a never ending project, right? It's not like you're one and done. So for in, in some ways it's sort of um, like building a building, but the building never ends. <laughs> so you have a good foundation, you can build just about anything. But um, yeah, I look, I mean, that's what's fun about my job is that, yeah, I'm an architect. Yes, I design buildings but it's really about designing the team and what we do for our clients. So that's kind of the exciting part. I love that. that that's a, such a great analogy. Uh, you're an architect, but now you were once designing buildings, now it's designing a team. And I think that's so important, uh, especially like when, when you know, you're, you're, you're coming in and, and you're, you're helping develop as the, as the, the leader um, you know, the, the, the culture of the company is just so important to the health of that and, and, and maintaining a good framework. So what was that like, you know, coming into, you know, an existing company and, and, and you know, growing it? What, what were some of, the, some of the things that you put in place to maintain that culture and help build that team? Well, the culture's evolved since I was here. I mean, I worked directly with Mr. Portman on projects and it, he was a sole proprietor and we all worked for him designing buildings with and and for him. Um, and, and as we are, have transitioned over and are still transitioning over to um, multiple designers and a kind of different practice model, um, to be able to take my experience from New York and say, okay, we have multiple folks that can do different talents in different areas. What we don't do here that's different than other firms is we don't have silos of studios. So we don't have you know, the, the higher ed studio or just the hospitality studio. Um, I think that the best designers can take the best parts from the different projects that they're working on and lend them to whatever they're working on. Um, design's design, but, you know, you do have to have practice areas and practice experts, which we have. Uh, but at the same time, there is um, a lot that can be learned from different program types that can come in and make whatever project you're working on even better. So we have a really good um, dialogue and collaboration here at the office that, um, you know, we, we put projects up, we have reviews once a week and we talk about what everybody's working on and, and the team says, have you thought about or would you consider? And, you know, that, that design director is responsible for that portion, but, um, you know, he can walk away with a couple of thoughts in his back pocket and choose if he wants to use it or not. But yeah. I think that's, that's the difference is that we have a lot more um, diversity and collaboration and, and coming from people from all over the world. So it's, it's really, it's really fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think, I think that's a, a really good style of leadership. I mean, we do the same thing in our organization is like when we're collab it's, it's, if you're having everybody operate on silos, you're, you're not going to get the best input. Of course, you have the leader that makes the final decision, but it's good to, to have a team, especially when you work in any type of creative environment, you know, uh, being an architect design studio, same, same thing, right? Having, you never know where that nugget might come from, right? That's right. And, and, and it's, it's like, even on a movie set, you know, like, like there's projects that I've worked on that like somebody, a, a grip or somebody would say something and be like, you know what, that was a great idea. Yeah, let's, 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 uh, let's incorporate that. And I think it's important for a leader to really listen to their team and identify, um, you know, areas to, to make it stronger. And I think that's, that's the whole, the whole thing behind behind having teamwork and that having that open door collaborative environment. Right. I think what's important as well, and you, I think you hit on it from a collaborative, creative environment point of view, you also need to identify good ideas mm -hmm. that may not be appropriate within what you're working on. Mm -hmm. So you don't just throw it out and say, it's a bad idea. You say, that's an excellent idea. It's just not a good fit for what we're doing here, but we might be able to revisit that later. And that's a whole different conversation than, than uh, you know, just shutting people down and, and things like that. Because there are some amazing things that can spin out of not exactly the right fit for this, but it might transform something else. Yeah, no, that's a great point. So um, at, at the time of this recording, so we're, we're recording during obviously 
uh, gosh, going into the, another year of the start of the pandemic and stuff. And we're kind of stuff, you know, kind of trickling from last year. And so, you know, the recording of this is in January. Um, I, I think a lot of people might be interested in, especially, you know, from, from a design aspect, let's talk about commercial real estate. Let's talk about, um, you know, what, what's going on out there. Are you, are you, I mean, are you seeing effects in your business or are you pivoting in certain ways? Like what, what, what's happening in your world? What's the crystal ball say, right? <laughs> um, it's a couple of different ways to think about it. Um, one, we can all be reactionary and, and kind of panic and say, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow um, or overcompensate and say, no one's ever going to go back to an office space again or to a hotel room or have a convention. And I don't think that's realistic. Um, what's interesting is I'm finding, I mean, we do, this is on a Zoom call, but, and we all do those for the past year, or however it's been. And I'm finding that there is going to be a complete um, reactionary response to that saying, I wanna have a meeting in person. Um, so there's, there's, there's that, and I'm hopeful about that. You asked specifically about what's going on in, in the real estate market. So with, what's going on is there's a lot of hedging relative to positioning of resources and markets of purchasing um, distressed properties and things like that. So people that have money are utilizing it in a smart way to kind of gobble up um, pre-positioned projects moving forward in the future. So there's a positioning happening. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a lot of um, adaptive reuse, which wasn't happening as much before. So you would have conversions. We're seeing a lot of conversions from, say, an office to hospitality or office to residential, not necessarily hospitality. Yeah, Hospitality right now is, is suffering a bit. Yeah. But um, like we all know, folks that are smart, in my opinion, um, and have the capital and don't necessarily have to get it underwritten, um, will go ahead and plan design now, construction, couple of years, the whole cycle takes about three years. And by the time everything is kind of back to normal, so to speak, um, they'll have a brand new property positioned in the right place. And some people may think, well, that's a brand new building and has nothing in it. I'm gonna stay there versus the one that was a, a, a TI or tenant improvement, so. Yeah. Um, also, what's ha other happening? Well, residential is hot right now. Um, cause everybody's working from home and there's that whole, um, you know, you work from home a couple of days a week, you go in the office, if you're going in the office at all. Um, I do think that from a, um, a long-term adjusting to our employees strategy, um, we, we think that we're going to have to be a lot more flexible relative to the work from home cause it has been so successful. Um, I, some of us were, were skeptical. You know, and saying, you know, from a collaborative design point of view, how do you uh, maintain that same level of interaction? What well, we've had to adapt to, and we, we've done a good job. Um, the question is going to be um, how much do people want to return back to the office? And, and the way I see it is I want people to come back on their own. If that makes sense. Have, you know, I, I'm going to ask them to come back probably three days a week, um, but I would prefer them to come to me and say, you know what? The office environment is really where we want to be. That's the culture we want to kind of yeah. strengthen. And um, yeah, so that's that's kind of in a roundabout way, sort of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think I think you got a good valid point there. I mean, there's some people that are like they they need to be around people. It's their personality. Like they're waiting for the opportunity for them to kind of get back to it. And I also think that there's some businesses they have to have a physical location like that you have to in order to operate. And I'm, I'm curious, I'd like to actually get your thoughts on this is in the design aspect, is there going to be more like mixed use or something like that, where it's a safer bet for the investor? I mean, are, are you seeing anything like that where, where, where some of the, the, the concepts that are coming in, like, is that, is that a different angle because the world's kind of changed a little bit? Great question. It depends upon the client. Um, certain clients are doing certain different, different scale projects. Um, mixed use, as far as I'm concerned, makes complete sense because you can diversify your, 
your income class. Um, it gets more challenging if you're not a sophisticated developer. Um, some, some folks are looking at you know, an efficiency on a single use project. And then when they start to put things together, they say, well, I don't understand why it's the performa doesn't kind of execute the same, even though I stick them together. Um, so relative to, is there an advantage of doing some of that? There are, yes and no. Um, I, you know, we as, you know, designers and, and urban designers and things like that always think that um, there is an economy of scale relative to live, work, play. Um, it's better for the environment. It's better for densification cities. It's better for that kind of interaction, the intermodal transit systems and things like that to get the cities to be more vibrant. We are seeing a, a slight trend towards, you know, the flight from urbanism relative to the economy. So you have people moving out of the city because of what they deem to be unsafe, COVID, civil unrest, whatever you want to call it. Um, I do think that um, in the long term, there will be a, a compression again for density um, once everything is, is kind of back to normal, which goes back to the whole interactive relationship of society and getting good ideas and interacting with smart people and, and kind of moving things forward. So that's a good point. That's really good. So uh, we're, we're coming up to the top of our episode here. So I always like to, to end with, with a question. Um, if you were to give one piece of leadership advice or um, somebody that, that is in your field of business, what would that be, especially in this time? Keep trying. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Um, you know, I've always said that I'm going to continue to try different avenues, whatever it happens to be, whatever segment of the practice to kind of advance it and find the best of breed and find the right solutions. And if that solution doesn't work, take two steps back and try something else. It's okay to try things that may or may not work out. You're going to learn something. Um, and if you are successful, just keep going with it and trying to figure out, you know, what was successful about that. And then that it goes with everything that goes with your staff, with, you know, business plans, whatever it is, it's always a work in progress. Um, so don't think anything is one and done because it never is. Love that. I love that. So keep trying, don't give up, keep trying. And even though you may run into some setbacks, and, and it's not you're losing, you're learning, right? As long as you're constantly learning, keep innovating, keep innovating, because eventually it's going to pull you through and, and get you that much closer to wherever your goal is. Rob, thank you so much for coming on today's episode. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, make sure you mash that like button and subscribe so you get the latest episodes. And if somebody else needs to hear it, please do them that favor and share it.